Hey guys, and looky here at this Black Limbia coffee table made 23 years ago by a local carpenter. My client asked me to redo and modernize this piece and get rid of that orangey color. There was a split going down the middle and the lacquer was failing, but all in all, this piece was in great condition and I was excited to get to it. Look here how he installed the wheels inside the square leg, just barely peeking out and making this heavy piece easy to move around. I really like that. So first thing was to get this piece cleaned and sanded. Again, this piece was really taken care of, so I just used a half and half vinegar solution and wiped it down and went straight for sanding. I started with an 80 grit but quickly realized I should start with a 60 because this lacquer was really thick and I wanted to get things moving along. Once I got the bulk of the sanding down, I cleaned them up and later I went in again with the 60 grit and then went all the way up to 220. I was just falling in love with this color and the wood grain. I was really enjoying this piece. I tried using a scraper for the top part, but I quickly realized that it wasn't cutting through. So I got it cleaned up and ready for sanding. I wanted to get the frame of the tabletop sanded down to bare wood and then I could maybe do some examples to see what would best create that natural looking wood color. I had noticed these little holes scattered and I was worried about wood beetles so I jumped on a Facebook uh, woodworking page and I was advised that the Black Limbia is quite known for these holes that were created by the live tree that would attack insects and therefore create this beautiful wood grain so I was happy to learn that. So again this was the yellowy orangey color that was on it and I sanded everything down to this natural wood and then I started uh, applying lacquers and paints to see what would look best. This is the Bona Novia lacquer and it seemed very natural and clean, but it did do a bit of yellowing. Then I tried a semi-transparent walnut color by Flood, which uh, in hindsight, I might have wiped down like you would a wash, but after I applied that with the lacquer, I wasn't quite happy. Next was a whitewash. I whitewashed this whole piece and then the first half I covered both with that flood color and the second piece with that lacquer Bona Novia. And you can see the natural wood here and then the whitewashed with the Bona Novia next to it and it just looked like a perfect fit to me. Okay, so it was time to get geared up <laughs> like you can see and start with the sanding. I didn't feel like this top piece was moving along at all, so I moved to the dreaded stripper. So even though the scraping looks quite satisfying, it did, still didn't go all the way through. So I went in for a second coating. After that, I cleaned it all up with mineral spirits and of course got ready for
Once I got down to bare wood, it was time to suit up and begin sanding from 40 to 60 to 80 to 120 and then to 220. Enjoy the sand dancing. I'm not sure, but I think my internal music was something like I'm a survivor, I'm not gonna give up, I'm gonna make it, or I'm not sure if those are the words, but I'm pretty sure that was the song I was singing. Remember that split that was in the wood? So it went all the way through, of course, and this is where the drawer was attached to. So I undid that and then went in with glue. I haven't gotten myself a fancy schmancy glue syringe yet, but this did the work too. Then I clamped everything down and left it there overnight. Upon inspection, I saw that it didn't get completely filled up, so I created this mixture of some sawdust and glue and just filled it all in. It looked great. I made a 50% water, 50% water-based cream color and made sure I got it spread on real nice with no brush marks and wiped it all down. You can clearly see the whitewash here, but the lacquer was going to warm it all up. Then abracadabra, they were all done. The top had uh, wood grain going in all different directions, so I went in slowly and this brush was just perfect at keeping it between the lines and wiped washed and then wiped it all away. As I was working outside under the sun, I sensed that the piece was drying up too fast. So this time I sprayed with water before I whitewashed and then that gave me a little bit more time to work on everything before I wiped it down. I 
really inspected each piece as I worked because I was scared of brush strokes. And then I moved on to cleaning up the drawers, which again was no hassle because it was really taken care of. I wiped it down and used this Rust-Oleum furniture wax, got everything waxed up, let it soak in, and wiped it away. Finally, it was time to seal. I used this Bonanovia one component solution that reacts with oxygen and forms a two component solution. I don't know what that means, but I know that it was very high quality and it went on super smooth, super easy. I sanded each time with 400 grit and I did three layers and was very happy with the results. The drawer pulls were attached so cleverly. I just loved how simple it just slid in and then the other side I pressed down with the hammer and that's it. They're in place. And then I attached the front of the door to the drawers. And that was it. Put everything back together, the drawers, the legs back in place gave a last bit of cleaning to the inside of the wheels there and started taking some pictures. So here's a quick reminder of where we began and where we are now. Much lighter, brighter, beachy looking kind of whitewashed and happily redone. The old lacquer, the old orangey lacquer, and the modern, new, natural looking wood lacquer. I loved it, I was so happy with it. And I got offered to redo their buffet, which looks exactly the same. And I'm so happy to get on with that. Thanks guys for joining me on this long journey to get this beautiful table renewed and modernized. Please subscribe, and I'll see you again on Raising the Grain.